Hi. Hi. Go. Hey, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. And oh. Oh, we got here. Oh. Meet Ryan. Mm -hmm. Um. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm 15. No. I'm 16. I live in Hayward, and I've been with ACLU for three to four years. Hi, my name's Ruby. I'm 19 years old, and this is actually my first day with the ACLU. Uh, I'm AJ, and I've been with ACLU for three hours. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be at the chat thingy with yeah. her. All three of us are going to be at the chat. Um, our name is Ruby ACLU. I'm Ryan. Oh my god, at ACLU. And if you guys want to just chat with us, you guys can look right there. Uh, my name is Saskia. I've been with the ACLU for a year and a half, and um, yeah. I'm Crystal. I've been with ACLU for a couple weeks now, and I'm from Hayward. I'm Yasmin. I'm 15, and I've been with the ACLU since January. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the ACLU stands for the American Civil Liberties Union. And its goal is to protect people's constitutional rights, such as uh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of press. And also um, to extend rights to groups that have historically been denied rights, such as people of color, um, people with disabilities, and women. We are not lawyers. The following is just general advice and practice tips for about your rights. We do not provide personal legal advice about individual situations. Okay, so at the ACLU we get a lot of calls from students like you guys across the nation who have questions about their rights. So throughout this training we'll cover some of the most um, common incidents as we get on the phone about. Uh, we'll be, there will be a question and answering session at the end of the workshop, so feel free to ask um, the three of them on chat any questions you have about GSA, LGBT rights, ACLU, whatever we can answer. Okay. So this first skit that we're going to show you is about how you can start a GSA and some of the problems that students run into when trying to start a GSA. Um, so enjoy! Hello ladies. Hi! Can we start a GSA? <laughs> No. Why? The Federal Equal Access Act protects the rights of students to form clubs at public high schools. There are two types of clubs, curricular and non-curricular clubs. A curricular club is like math or science club. A non-curricular club is like guitar or chess club. GSA falls under non-curricular clubs almost always. The Equal Access Act says that if your school allows students to form one non-curricular club, they can't say no to any other students who want to form any other type of non-curricular club. So, if your school allows any non-curricular clubs, they can't deny your application to start a GSA. Alright, but you can't meet on school grounds. Well, where's not fair? Me? The Equal Access Act also states that if the school allows non-curricular clubs, they have to be treated the same. Therefore, if your school's other non-curricular club can meet on school grounds, post flyers in the hallway, or make announcements, they can't stop your GSA from doing the same. Alright, but you need a sponsor. It's going to take forever. To form a GSA, you have to follow the same rules as other non-curricular clubs on campus. So, if your school requires a teacher sponsor for other non-curricular clubs, you'll have to do the same for your GSA. Research your school rules on starting non-curricular clubs so you can be prepared to follow them carefully. I got it! What? We can get Mr. Dwyer to sponsor us. It's a great idea. Darn! Yes. Thwart it again! <laughs> Here are some tips on starting a GSA. When going up to a school authority, you should be kind, polite, and respectful. Document everything. And make sure to bring a friend with you to help take notes. Find out exactly what the rules are for starting a new club at your school and follow them carefully. Find friends and adult allies for support on starting the GSA. Good luck with starting your GSA. Yay! So um, that skit you just saw is pretty much about 
um, is an example of like a couple students wanting to start a GSA and a couple of the problems that they run into. Pretty much the gist of the skit is that the Equal Access Act allows all public schools have to have all the same curricular and extracurricular clubs, meaning that if you have like a math club and a science club, that they both have to be treated the same. And then if you have like a chess club and a guitar club, well then you have all the right to start a GSA club because that most of the time falls under an extra non-curricular club. So um, that was pretty much the gist of it. So if you're having problems starting a GSA at your school, remember to keep track of everything your principal says and feel free to get in touch with the ACLU. All right, so the next gift that we're gonna have is about free speech and what goes on within a school that doesn't allow certain things to happen. And this one, actually, it's going to take a second to load. So um, if you want to um, see if there are any other questions out there uh, regarding that skit. Wait, what, what's going on? Oh, I'm, I'm just asking to see if there are any questions uh, regarding that first skit that they just saw. Are we on right now? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> Saskia, do you want to go over? Um, so if you guys have questions, continue to ask for your questions on the chat. Yeah. About just to reiterate, it's really important to find out what the rules are at your school for starting a club. They should be published in the student handbook, and you can always ask your principal, and you should follow those rules exactly, um, because you have the same rights to start a non-curricular club um, as any anybody else who wants to start a non-curricular club, but you also have the same responsibilities, and it's good to know what those are. your shirt say? I'm so super gay and fabulous. Please go to the restroom and change. Your shirt's rebellious and distracting. The First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution protects your right to free speech and expression and forbids the government from violating that right. The right to expression usually extends to things like t-shirts as long as the school treats all students the same. Okay, take a seat, but cover it up. But Jimmy gets to wear a McCain shirt. It shows that it shows something he supports, and it's also illegal for school, public schools, to tell students what they can and can't support or talk about. Schools can enforce dress codes, but they have to enforce the dress code equally for all students. For example, if your school allows other students to wear T-shirts that express their political or social beliefs, then the school shouldn't tell you not to wear a gay pride T-shirt. Keep track if other students are allowed to wear attire with political messages. Here are some tips and information. The one exception is that the law allows schools to ban obscene, threatening, or lewd, or vulgar speech. The law says that other than for obscene, threatening, or lewd, and vulgar speech, students may express their views freely. Students may express themselves freely, but this may not significantly disrupt class or interfere with the rights of others. The courts are clear that if the school's concern is about other students' reaction to a message on a t-shirt disrupting class, this is not a valid reason for censoring it. These free, this, these free speech rights allow you to talk about being gay at school, but again, you, don't wanna, you can't disrupt class, so don't climb up on a desk in the middle of social studies class to tell everyone that you're gay. But if you talk to a friend about being at lunch about being gay or wear a t-shirt supporting gay marriage, that's perfectly okay. I'm so super gay and fabulous. I'm bi. I'm an ally. Hey, do you want to go to prom with me? Sure. That's not okay. Only a boy and a girl can go to prom together. The right to take a same-sex date to a school dance is usually considered freedom of expression. If your school is bugging you about this, contact us. We can normally change a school's mind. So, um, just to summarize that skit, some things you should know. Um, if your teacher tells you that you can't wear a t-shirt that has something like a pro-gay marriage slogan on it, keep track of what other students at your school are wearing and if they, the teacher tells them that they can't wear shirts like that, because if other students have shirts with political messages, your teacher can't tell you that you don't have the right to wear a shirt with a pro-gay marriage slogan on it. Um, so now we're going to show a PowerPoint and talk more about harassment in schools. 
Nobody deserves to be harassed, and you have the right to be who you really are at school. So um, here are some examples of types of harassment that one might face, and then we're going to give you some tips. About harassment, GSA Know Your Rights training. Example one, other students call me names and threaten me at school. Example two, other students call me names and threaten me on the bus. Example three, my school didn't do anything about it when I reported being harassed. Example four, another student is telling people at school that I'm gay without my permission. What are your rights? So several federal courts have ruled that schools have to take action when one is being bullied or harassed because they're gay, gay um, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. Um, they have to take steps to stop the harassment and protect the students. So if you are experiencing harassment because you're gay, bisexual, lesbian, or transgender, here are some things you should do. Um, put the school on notice that the harassment is happening. Go to your principal, a counselor, or an assistant principal and tell him or her about each incident every time, even if there was a teacher who saw what was occurring. Keep your own records of each incident. Get a notebook and write down the date time where each incident happened, who was involved, who saw what happened, and who, t and who you told. If you or your parents send any letters to the school, make sure you keep a copy of your records. Um, get in touch with us, the ACLU. Get in touch with us if your school isn't helping fix the problems. We've had lots of success in these kinds of situations without having to go to court. Um, so here are some ways you can contact the ACLU. First off, we have offices in every state, so to find your local ACLU office, just go to aclu.org and in the right, bottom right side, there's a link that will help you locate that office. When you contact us, it's confidential. We'll never talk to your school, your parents, um, or your peers without your permission. Contact the ACLU National Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Project by calling 1212-549-2671. So now we're going to talk to you guys about some general tips that you could have learned from the skits that we showed you. First off, we mentioned plenty of time before and we will continue to. You must document everything. If you're right The audio once again cut out over here, so just to fill in this tip, if you're censored, keep things cool and simple. Remain calm and polite and comply with any order from your principal or teacher. Obeying an order from a school official does not mean that you agree with it. It does not affect your right to challenge it through the proper channels later on. Refusing to change t-shirts or getting into an argument with school officials only muddles the issue and not cooperating might provide the school with an excuse to deflect blame for its censorship onto you by saying that you are insubordinate or disruptive. Remember to keep a copy of any written document the school gives you on this matter, and to write down the name and contact information of any person who witnessed any exchange between you and the school official over your t-shirts. So now we're going to show you a PowerPoint on documentation and talk about it too. As I mentioned before, it's really important to document everything that happens when asserting your rights in school. So whether you're starting a GSA or experiencing harassment, you should keep a journal or a notebook and just keep track of the following things. Okay, actually before we go into the documentation PowerPoint, if it's okay, we have one question here, which is, does outing actually count as harassment? It's a terrible thing to do, but does, does it actually count as a legal form of harassment? I would think. I don't know. Anything no? you can just say anything? Um, if it's persistent and if you've made a complaint, um, 
your school has to take action to um, stop the person. Um, anything that, I think according to the law, anything that is you know disrupting your learning and is causing you a lot of stress is considered harassment. Also, we mentioned in our uh, PowerPoint, the green PowerPoint, we just showed you that when we were talking about the examples of harassment, one of the examples were that a student's friend or peer outed them. So yeah, I would think that we all agree that that is a form of harassment, especially because that's something that's private and personal, and so nobody should be sharing that information with others. So um, like we said, you should follow those the things, the advice we gave you and document stuff if you want to report the person. That said, if the person didn't mean anything bad by it, I don't think, like if it's your friend and they yeah. didn't know that you wanted to keep that secret and they told somebody, I don't think that that counts as harassment per se, but if it's somebody who's trying to hurt you by persistent, you know, consistently telling people that you're gay, um, that does count as harassment. Yeah. So like we were talking about, um, we're going to show you now this PowerPoint documentation and how important it is and how you can document certain things. Why is it important? So that you have proof of your legal rights and that were violated to keep a events and quotes. Who you reported it to. Um, if you're being bullied, document who you told. If you told your parents, your principal, or your friends. If you sent a letter to the school, make sure you have a copy of that, too, and the date it was delivered. The audio cut out here for a moment, so uh, I'm just going to voice over what the youth trainers discussed here. Uh, so first of all, where did it happen? Make sure to document the location. If you spoke to the principal in their office about starting a GSA, then document that. If you experienced bullying on the school bus or in the classroom, write that down as well. Next, who was involved? If you were bullied or harassed, write down who was involved, including who you remember witnessing the incident. When talking to school officials, make sure to bring along a student or adult ally. What happened? Did you meet with the principal about starting a GSA and get resistance? Did someone call you names or threaten you? Write down what everyone said and did, what happened, and also when it all happened. So write down the date and time in order to have a full report to present. If there are witnesses, having a witness provide, provides a third person perspective and gives you some someone that backs you up on in verifying your story. So that's all we have prepared for you guys. Questioning and answering session. So are there any questions? After our technical difficulties. <laughs> And you want to talk maybe about how people can find resources later. Do you want to go over again some of the ways that people can find resources? Um, yeah, you can go to um, the GSA Network website and also the ACLU website at aclu.org and there are tons of resources for you to look at and um, you know learn more about what we've talked about. Um, and um, contacting your ACLU, your local ACLU chapter is a great way to get involved and ask questions. And you want to point out that there's like more specific state laws that people... Yeah, in um, California we're really lucky because they have some really cool laws for public schools regarding like harassment and stuff. But um, remember, every state kind of has different laws when it comes to starting certain clubs and starting, you know, uh, different public school uh, laws. So make sure, like, you look over the kind of laws that your school has. I know California has some pretty cool laws. So mm -hmm. the laws we talked about are federal laws, so they apply everywhere. But um, you know, you might be more protected in certain states. So it's cool to check that out.
And um, just so you guys know, when starting a GSA, uh, it, the, I mentioned it before, but I don't know if you guys caught it, the actual law that protects the rights for students to start a GSA, which falls under non curricular clubs, is the Equal Access Act. So if you're thinking about starting that club, but you're having some resistance when it, from your public school, then you should definitely look up that law, and it can definitely help you. And if you're having trouble like um, interpreting it, then you can always contact the ACLU. I mean, we can help you. Not we don't have we're not just lawyers. We're also activists and um, people interested in these kinds of social problems. So feel free to call us about those things. Yeah. Great. Um, any questions? <laughs> Thank. Um, I think you covered the main one that they had. I know that one question that has come up a lot um, on the Facebook group that uh, maybe people weren't able to tune in live today was, um, is there anything that they can do in a, if they're in a religious school? Uh, so all of, uh, uh, is all of this apply to just public schools? Yeah. Yes, unfortunately, <laughs> if you're in a private school, these federal laws um, don't apply um, and your school can have you know different rules um, so however if you're still being like harassed at a religious school or a private school it's all the same concept whether you're being bullied anywhere it's not okay so make sure you do talk to somebody if you're being harassed I mean there's Document different everything yeah and there's different things you could do about it in public schools it, as we mentioned before it kind of sucks that in private schools there's, they kind of like their own rules. They don't really have to follow the kinds that are put up for public school. So, yeah. yeah. But your school might have rules that are protecting you, so make sure you go into the student handbook. Maybe there's a complaint form. It's always a good idea to document everything and file a complaint and um, talk to your principal. And, yeah. And you can still advocate in that school. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have you know the same you protections. Lots, you don't have the same protections, but you still have a lot of options, and you know we encourage you to advocate for yourself. You know whatever kind of school you're in. Yeah, we have a. You may not be able to start a club, but they can't just beat you up, can they? <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay, I think. Do you wanna wrap up or to say goodbye? Okay. Thanks for watching. Yep. Remember, <laughs> have your voice. Stand up for your rights. Don't let yeah. people put you down and tell you what to do. You can be yourself no matter what. Make it better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> document. You must document everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and also remember to go to the Facebook page, and I'll put that back in the chat now. Um, and some of these you might be on the Facebook page later to answer any more questions that come up later, or if anyone's watching a recording of this right now. Okay. Great. Bye, everyone. <laughs>